How's it going my YouTube friends? Today I'm going to be showing you how to switch the turn signal switch and upgrade it at the same time on your Jeep Compass or Jeep Patriot. Now this vehicle that I'll be showing you the install on is my 2011 Jeep Compass Limited. So this model um, does have a few specific features that are very important for this modification. So obviously if you're just changing the part, which is this guy right here, the turn signal switch, this one, the dimmer function right here is actually bad, which isn't a deal breaker. The turn signals and lights and all that stuff work, even the fog lights. But uh, yeah, this doesn't work, so we're switching it out. And I figured what better way to switch it out than to upgrade in the process. So like I mentioned, this does depend on the model that you have or at least the options. And now why I say that is if you're looking at getting the auto headlight function, which is this part number right here you can see it s14963 this is actually believe it or not from a 2011 jeep liberty so what we'll be doing is not only switching it out but if you notice there you have a auto feature at the very end i can't exactly point and shoot at the same time but pretty much that's what we're doing we're not only changing this, but we're upgrading. So my understanding is these turn signal switches are all primarily the same, whether it's a Chrysler 200, a PT Cruiser, Jeep Compass, Jeep Patriot. I mean, all of them primarily for the most part use the exact same turn signal switch setup with the exception of the Jeep Liberty. So I want to say it's 2008 ish to 2011, 2012 that this upgrade will work. Now, you do need to pay attention to make sure the Jeep Liberty that you're using at least has the options that you need. This one has the auto and the fog lights. So this particular vehicle, my 2011 Jeep Compass, it does have the fog lights. The Compasses and the Patriots never came factory with auto headlights, so this is going to be an upgrade for it. Now, this particular part I got from the local parts store, so it is kind of a pricey upgrade. I know most of them that they sell between the auto parts store, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, Advance Auto, they're all around 80 bucks. So it's pretty pricey, but uh, I actually, I had them give me a good deal and use some coupons. So I got it for 40 bucks. So of course you can get used ones that uh, may save you a few dollars, but uh, I mean, I think it's a pretty cool upgrade. But backtracking here real quick, it does depend on the model of Jeep that you're using. Same thing with the Patriot. So the main thing to look out for is if you have a autofocus, I don't know if that's what it's called, auto dim rear view mirror. And the reason I say that is because it has a ambient light sensor already on it. And let me show you what exactly I'm talking about. Now it's gonna be very hard to show on the camera. And I honestly don't know if I'll be able to, but there is a sensor right here on the back of your mirror. So a lot of vehicles, have the light sensor on the dash right there. But of course, Jeeps, they do it sometimes a little bit differently. And it's up and behind the mirror. So I don't know what specific models came with this option or if it was just an additional option that you can get. But if your Jeep Compass or Patriot has a auto dim mirror, and you should be able to notice by the power button, if it does not and it's a manual mirror, you will have a flap here to kind of move this and direct if somebody's, you know, shining their high beams, doesn't go in your eyes. So if you have this little power button here, you go around the back, you notice there's a little sensor right here, more than likely this upgrade will work. Not the most difficult thing ever, but also not the cheapest thing. But if you have the right tools and everything, it's not a bad upgrade and it's not that difficult. A couple bolts and we'll be off to the races here. So let me show you to start out with there's gonna be one T15 Torx screw somewhere right there, and then a Phillips screw here, and then also right here. So right there, you might be able to see it. So we'll start with the T15 Torx and remove that. not sure what a Torx bit looks like. It's 
that right here. Set that off to the side. Now you need to get a Phillips screwdriver and it might be a little tricky, but here is the tilt for the steering wheel. And then right in there is a Phillips. We'll have one more of these to remove. We'll be able to finagle this plastic off. One more Phillips here, and that's pretty much it for removal. So the other one is on the opposite side here. You can see the ignition, and it's just right up in there. There you have it, the second one. Set that off to the side. I'll actually tilt this wheel down. So now you can kind of just lift up. And this top cover plate pops off. And then it just has a couple clips on each side. And set that to the side and here's what you're left with. gives you a little better access to the switch on the side but uh, this plastic piece there's another cover at the bottom and actually I'm gonna lower this or release the tilt lever here and that enables this to move so this bottom cover can come off completely but it might not be necessary but there's the Phillips screw so basically we're gonna remove this other Phillips screw and that's all that's holding this turn signal switch in and then two electrical clips, one up top here, and then another one right here. We'll remove those after this, but we'll see if we can finagle this out without removing this plastic piece. Here's this little screw that holds that turn signal switch in. And it's really not the end of the world if you drop it because it's kind of hard. I definitely recommend using a magnetic screw because it'll fall down in here. But it'll actually travel through this plastic piece and then kind of fall out and fall onto the floor. So again, it's not the end of the world, but if you have a magnetic screwdriver, definitely go ahead and try to use that. But now this should slide out. But the key is if there's enough room to slide it out without hitting this bottom plastic piece and I don't know if I can oh there we go yep finagle that out so here are the electrical clips I was showing you so the ones up top here and the other one actually is not here like I was pointing out it's in the back so push down and that pops out so there's a little tiny clip that you push down there should be a similar process for the one in the back. I don't know if I can spin this around and get to a better angle. Yep, here we go. Now you have it. Move this out of the way. So that's a seven pin right there where the yellow wires were going into, and then the back is a four pin, I believe. One, two, three, four, yep, four pin. There you have it. So this is the old one. Has the fog light function, all of that good stuff, minus the auto. So that's why we're gonna upgrade. So this going in the garbage, and let's grab that new part. Right here, as you can see, identical seven pin there. Four pin there, same exact indentation for the connector to go in there. I mean, there's literally no physical modifications to the part that are required whatsoever. So now we just have to shift this back in, plug it in, put it back together, see if it works. So it's also important to note when sliding this back in, there is a channel, one right there. You can see it, so there's a channel there and the channel at the bottom. And I'll sh try to show you what I mean. 
So before we try to connect the wires, we're gonna try to slide it into the channel. And actually, let me show you on here. Can. So here, right down there is one channel, and then the other one is actually right there. So let's try to slide this back in. this channel in and then it's probably going to be next to impossible to film the other one since I have to push down on this plastic piece so here it is probably couldn't see it but you just have to be mindful of the two channels and you'll know if it's in there or not because this thing will wiggle like crazy so this is I mean I'm putting some force behind this and it's not moving and then you know, obviously the Phillips screw back in here, but let's connect the electrical connectors. So for this yellow one, it might actually be little bit easier to plug it in before you finagle this all the way back in there but the white one it's not too bad but make sure it's all clipped in there give it a good little tug on there obviously not too hard just to make sure those clips are in there nice and tight now the other thing we need to do is put in this Phillips screw back Don't over torque it down. You're not cinching down a motor mount or wheels or anything. So just a little bit of oomph on it, not too much. Now we're ready for this cover. Drop it over like such. Just kinda push together, see how my hand's like a C, just crimp down like that. Go to the other side here, same. Kind of thing. We'll get that screw back up underneath here. The other one back on the other side. Right there. The torque screw right there. And it's pretty much done. With the exception of one other thing. And I'll show you that here. But let's get these bolts cinched down. And we're almost done. Now as far as bolts goes, the T15 Torx in the center of the column here, this is the last bolt that you need to put back for the installation. So that concludes the actual install of the part. Now if you're replacing it with a factory style unit, meaning you know yours didn't have the auto function and you replaced it with one that's not the auto function, then you're done. But if you're like myself and have a compass or a patriot and you want this auto function and you're upgrading, unfortunately there's one more step and it kind of gets a little complex. Reason being is the fact that it will unfortunately need programmed. So there's two main ways of doing this. One, you can go ahead, call your dealer, stop at their service department and discuss with them, and they will be able to program it for you. That can kind of be a little difficult to explain things. Or you can download the software and get what's called an OBD2 port to USB, the corresponding software to work with your laptop to do it yourself. Now, this cable is what's called a OBD Link SX. And it's found on Amazon for, I want to say, $25. And uh, it's a nice little handy gizmo, and it works with any vehicle, 1996 or newer, that has an OBD port, OBD2 port, and then a laptop. So to make this all work together, you need this cable, and you need what's called App Car Diag FCA. Right there, you need this software. And to set it up, it's actually pretty simple. And I will show you how to do that in the top right here. So the reason I actually purchased this software, you can do much, much more than just 
program this to an auto function or whatnot, but the reason I initially purchased it was to install a backup camera and use the factory MyGig radio. And it's a beautiful thing because this cable works with all kinds of vehicles and then the software works for a numerous different Fiat Chrysler automobiles, Dodges, the Ram trucks, Chrysler, Fiat, Jeeps. I mean, you can program a bunch of stuff on Wranglers, Compasses, Patriots, all sorts of different things. So I initially bought it to program the backup camera. It works flawlessly. There's a whole slew of different things that you can do. Um, but yes, up top here, that's me talking about the program a little bit more in depth. But anyways, for sake of this video, we're gonna plug this guy down in the OBD port. So there you have it. I mean, this upgrade is super simple. You have four bolts, two electrical connectors, and a little bit of programming, and you can add auto headlights to your Jeep Compass or Patriot. So you can go to the dealership, but if you're a DIYer like myself, it's so much easier. Buy the OBD Link SX cable, buy the AppCard Diag FCA software. I want to say combine it. I spent $80. It is tied to one VIN. So be mindful of that, but you can pay a little extra and do multiple VINs. But uh, if you're like myself, you're planning on doing a couple things. Like I initially got it because of the backup camera system. I was going through the dealership to try to get a program. They wanted 120 an hour, two hours worth of later labor. So $240 they wanted just to activate a backup camera I installed. Absurd. So I invested $80 in the software, ended up spending 10 minutes of my time getting the backup camera program myself. So... Other things you can do, the auto function for the headlights, I mean, that's super simple. Once you get everything set up with the programming, which link up there on setup, I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. But once you have it set up, I mean, you're almost limitless with what you can do. And even if you're an actual programmer, unlike myself, you can do much more with it. But it's so simple. They build it out. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful program that you can just go through there and select headlights, Go down to the drop down box you can select enable the auto function finish and you're done you can even do things with tpms change parameters you throw bigger tires on it i mean you can change all that stuff so your speedo is not all out of whack so i mean it's simple and i mean let me show you here i mean this really does work it is an auto headlight function so it's set to automatic right now i'll show you the lights are on Go 
ahead and cut the key. Nothing has changed. Still set to auto. Now they're off. Beautiful thing. So, if you like the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the install or any videos in the future that you'd like to see, be sure to subscribe and drop a comment down below and I'll see what I can do for you. But I hope you enjoyed the video. It's really not that hard of a stall, an install. Not that hard of an install. Apparently it is to say that. But uh, I appreciate you watching. Catch you guys next time. Jeep on, my friends. I've been talking to you and begging to know what you want to be.